हिंदी में ब्रॉडकास्ट करेंगे जवाहरलाल नेहरू भाइयों और बहनों आज मैं कुछ आपसे जनरल इलेक्शन यानी जो चुनाव होने वाला है उसके बारे में कुछ कहा चाहता हूं आप सबों को इसमें दिलचस्पी है और दिलचस्पी होनी चाहिए अव्वल तो ये कि इतना बड़ा चुनाव जिसमें इतने लोग शामिल हों आज तक दुनिया में कहीं नहीं हुआ दूसरे ये कि बहसीत एक नागरिक भारत के आपको इसमें दिलचस्पी लेनी चाहिए क्योंकि इसके नतीजे से ये तय होगा कि हिंदुस्तान का भविष्य क्या होगा प्रजातंत्र यानी डेमोक्रेसी के लिए ये ज़रूरी है कि जनता पूरी तौर से दिलचस्पी ले उन बड़े सवालों में जो देश के सामने हैं और ऐसे इलेक्शन में जिसका नतीजा होता है कि गवर्नमेंट कैसे बने साल था 1951 इंडियाज फर्स्ट इलेक्शन सपोज टू हैपन एंड जवाहरलाल नेहरू वॉज द बिगेस्ट लीडर इन इंडिया एट दैट पॉइंट चोज फूलपुर एज इज कॉन्स्टिट्यूंसी बट दिस एपिसोड इज नॉट अबाउट हिम दिस एपिसोड इज अबाउट द मैन हु डिसाइडेड टू गिव जवाहरलाल नेहरू अ रन फॉर इज मनी और एटलीस्ट थॉट सो दिस दिस स्टोरी इज अबाउट अ बाबा अ मोनी बाबा अ बाबा हु डिसाइडेड दैट ही विल रन अगेंस्ट नेहरू एंड हु होप्ड दैट ही विल बीट नेहरू एंडेड अप गेटिंग लेस देन टेन परसेंट ऑफ द वोट कास्टेड फ्रॉम दैट सिटी और फ्रॉम दैट कॉन्स्टिट्यूंसी yet created a legacy that still is alive today here is a, a passage from the time magazine uh, issue january 28 1952 by plane ship train automobile and bullock cart india's prime minister jawaharlal nehru had been campaigning all over the country stirring up votes for india's four month long first general election He had traveled 23,000 miles, made as many as 10 speeches a day, addressed 5 million people. In fact, he had been just about everywhere, but in his own constituency in Allahabad. There was no need to canvass Allahabad, he said rather airily. Last week, he got a distressing news. His only opponent in Allahabad, a 52-year-old Prabhudat Brahmachari, who wears a luxurious grey beard orange and red rimmed spectacles a saffron robe and a long white loin cloth loin cloth had been quietly building up the vote quietly was the word for it he had done it without uttering a single word except an occasional loud laugh one plank back in 1921 brahmachari like nehru came under the spell of mahatma gandhi but brahmachari became a sadhu he took vows of silence and celibacy was jailed several times by the british once along with nehru set up a camp on the banks of river ganga to study the hindu epics and wrote the first 60 volumes of a 180 volume biography of hindu god krishna one day last october he cried out hey nath narayan meaning o oh lord god the holy man's only departure from silence and an attendant brought him his shafer fountain pen and paper he wrote If today I participate in an election it's because my inner voice bids me to do so. Nehru he said is a black englishman who studied in the west. Holy man brahmachari toured Nehru's constituency in a 1931 Dodge sedan accompanied by a troupe of hindu singers to the chanting of hindu shlokas. He danced on the platform rhythmically tapping a pair of small brass cymbal shank. A disciple read from the pamphlet he had written. Hearing that Brahmachari's pamphlet had sold 76,000 copies, Nehru came rushing back to Allahabad last week. The article adds, "This week as Allahabad voters went to the polls, Nehru seemed to have his constituency under control again. The whole country was pretty much his too." So yes, the man who was standing against Nehru was Prabhudat Brahmachari, an independent candidate, but independent only in name, because All India Hindu Mahasabha, Akhil Bharatiya Ram Rajya Parishad and bhartiya jansang all the three hindu nationalist parties supported him in fact before signing in for the election he met gol walkar a number of time and got his blessings to run against nehru similarly uh, akhil bharti ram raj parishad's leader acharya karpatri maharaj another major icon in the hindu conservative uh, you know pantheon actually urged him to fight against nehru so this was the only individual who was standing against nehru and this was the only individual who had 
as the hindu right thought some chance against him what was his election plank and why is it important today so there were essentially two things that he was fighting against when he was fighting against nehru number 1 was the hindu court bill the hindu court bill was essentially a bill that had been in works since well some part of it have been in works since 1891 at the least in 1891 the british india government put forth the age of consent bill which increased the age of consent for hindu women or girls from 10 to 12 this happened because there was a and trigger warning a case of marital rape against a 10 year old Ful- fulomani das in bengal usually the british government in india would not really meddle into the affairs of the locals but in this case they thought that it was important because it was just so like dastardly the act that had happened the man her husband was in his 30s when the bill was put forth many icons for example lokmanya tilak ishur chand vidyasagar opposed the bill they opposed the idea of increasing the age of consent from 10 to 12 and on the other side there were people like gopal krishna gokhale who was also mentor of gandhi who supported the bill then in 1929 there came sharda act which increased the age of consent from 12 to 16 again similar level of opposition happened one of the primary quote and quote reason for the opposition was ki how, how can you tell us how to do our religion you are an outsider at that point of time during the the sharda act kal uh, geeta press gorakhpur which had become a, a much known quantity most of north india it remained silent on the subject so it did not say anything however Now, Hanuman Prasad Poddar, who edited Kalyan up until 1971, he wrote in a letter to Geeta Press's founder Jay Dayal Goenka that uh, I am a big opponent of this law, not only because it relates to the age of girls, but due to its interference in religious matters. There is a need to get this law revoked so that in future no need is felt to legislate on such matters. To break the law and go to jail is the only way. I think opposing the legislation from a social and religious perspective would not help. The law has to be opposed politically. In 1941 the, the the British government created a committee uh, which was for the Hindu reform bill it was chaired by an individual whose name was B N Rao 1944 the committee put forth its ideas and 1948 it went under review remember by then india had like elect like had elections although it was still british india and nehru was the prime minister even before we became fully independent right but um in 1948 after we became independent it was put forth and there was a lot of opposition nehru's hope was that after he wins the election in 1952 he will um, get that done he in fact in 1950 in february 1950 he writes a letter to sardar patel jahan pe he says that how lonely he is feeling in within his own cabinet Uh, by this time sardar patel who dies later that year was very sick he was coughing blood so um, he was not actively participating in the activities of the cabinet um so back to prabhu dat maharaj the hindu court bill was opposed by the hindu right primarily because it contained a few key things like allowing intercaste marriages allowing a separate provision in marriage uh, which allowed for divorces in case of in you know uh, infidelity uh, it also allowed for the division of property from a father to all his kids equally um the opposition came from many different areas uh, for example one of the stalwarts from jharkhand uh, ramnarayan singh said that this will only create further rifts in in the, in the family and this is again religion should reform from its within itself and the only thing that will help the women folk of our country is love then um, uh, hari vishnu kamath from hoshangabad uh, another member of parliament he, uh, he said what is next will polygamy be allowed i mean the polygamy polyandry everything should be allowed if you are allowing divorce 
Long story short, this became one of the primary poll planks against Nehru. In August 1946, Goenka wrote an article in Kanyar titled Hindu Viva Ki Pavitrata Evam Tat Sambandhi, uh, in which he argued that such independence is not promised to women in Hindu social structure. A woman has to live with her father till marriage. With her husband as a married woman and after his demise, she has to live either with her son or some other relative. She cannot be independent at any cost. This is, these are not paraphrasing. Now, why is Kalyan important is because Kalyan was not considered like the prime of Hindi literature at that point, but it was still the most read um, <clears throat> Hindi magazine, especially it's Naryank, and it still uh, carried a lot of weight. It, it still does potentially. But also, um, most prominent uh, leading individuals who wrote in Hindi, from Rajendra Prasad to Nirala, Pant, Vajpayee, uh, Mahavir Prasad Devedi, Pitambar Dutt, Bhattatwal, and Prabhupada Brahmachari, all wrote for Kalyan. <clears throat> and Kalyan was the, the medium of propaganda for the Hindu conservative forces um, through the 20s, but especially in the 40s and right after the 40s in the 50s. In the 1940s, as the prospect of independence and partition became real, the focus of Gita Press and Kalyan turned entirely political, reporting and interpreting events through communal prism. Um, they, in fact, right before the 1952 election, they asked people to not vote for Nehru and Ambedkar specifically because they were the people who brought forth the Hindu code bill. Their literature about Hindu women openly preached, preached and glorified practices of sati to the question is sati pratha uh, proper or improper their answer is a wife's cremation with the dead body of her husband on the funeral pyre is not a tradition she in whose mind truth and enthusiasm come burns even without fire and she does not suffer any pain while she burns this is not a tradition that she should do so but this is her truth righteousness and faith in spiritual scriptural decorum it means that it is not just a tradition it is a religion on this topic, actually, Prabhupada Brahmachari has written a book whose title is Cremation of a Wife with Her Husband's Dead Body is the backbone of Hindu religion and it should be studied. Now I will let you kind of decide if the opposition by the Hindu right to Hindu code bill was right or not. One legitimate criticism of um, the Hindu code bill was that it was just for Hindus. There is no such code bill for Muslims. And why was the government of the day interfering only in the Hindu affairs, which is a fair point. And there are many different ways that people can respond to it. But if we look at what Nehru was thinking, his idea was that we have just gone through a partition and there is a substantial number of minorities who have decided to live in this India. And immediately doing something like this will needlessly make them afraid of this India and the idea was to allow this new minority or this um, new Muslim population in India which is not new but coming from like this massive shock of partition to allow time for them to settle down before anything of that sort is done and Nehru also deeply believed and again you can debate if it is right or wrong but he deeply believed that the 80% population the 80 plus percent majority Hindu population should set an example for all the minority communities by showing that they can reform themselves which shows these, this, these other communities that maybe that is something that they should undertake themselves to so that was his reason um, for Hindu code bill, bill being for the Hindus only and um, there being no Muslim court bill or Christian court bill. This is of course a question that is still asked and this is also like one of the big things for which Nehru is called um, pseudo-secular ap appeasement politics, all that. The second thing was cow protection. The interesting thing is that if you look at from the time that Nehru gains pr prominence and from the time it becomes that Nehru will be one of the biggest leader in the Indian political scene. On the, um, other, on the religious side, that's a very satisfactory, sounds to me, an optimistic statement. But on the main trouble that's been in India, the, uh, I'll put it this way, you have said in the past that you wanted to make India a secular democracy in which minorities could live at peace. Mm. Now, do you feel, I regard that as your, one of your principal objectives, do you feel that you have achieved that? 
that religious fanaticism is gone down now? Do you feel on top of that problem? Well, we are on top of it, but I can't say that we've put an end to it. Mm. And we have to face it uh, even now, often enough. But uh, the last elections showed that the Indian people generally don't like it. What starts to happen is that <clears throat> pamphlets start going around about how Nehru eats beef and pork. I mean, things that have that are still being said about him. And he may be, maybe he did. But uh, there was a time uh, when these sadhus actually, right uh, in 1947, a group of sadhus met Nehru around cow protection. And Nehru asked them, then why do you guys keep telling everybody that I eat beef? And they said, we don't say it. It's, uh, um, I, we don't know who says it. So it's interesting that already kind of this has been is being used as a plank. Is there any mention in the Hindu religion about beef being or cow meat being non-prescribed? We cannot be sure. Uh, Sanskrit scholar Rajni K. Dikshit says there is no such thing as holy cow in the Vedas. The Vedas consider bovine important for milk, beef, agriculture, and transport, but not divine or holy. The word agnya applies only to a milch cow because it is not economical to kill it. A vaish cow is meant for beef and especially reserved to an extent for Brahmins only. Atharva 12.4.13 tells us that in case a Brahmin begs for a cow from a non-Brahmin, even if that person has a beef dinner at his house, he has to select another cow to slaughter for his own dinner than the one that is asked for. The word Agnana, not to be killed, Coined by Rig Veta for young milch cows was the main cause of the Hindu misunderstanding that cows or bovines are not to be slaughtered. The Rig Veda has never used the word mother for cow. There is no punishment recommended for a cow slaughterer, even if someone kills a young milch cow. Beef eating is also not taboo. Beef parties are not allowed but highly appreciated. Not only allowed but highly appreciated. And a person who cooks beef for his guests is praised by the term Atithi Gua, one who offers beef to guests. Adi Shankaracharya, born in 788 CE in Kerala, in his commentary on Brahadra Nayako Upanishad, says, Odan, rice mixed with meat, is called Mansodan. On being asked whose meat it should be, he answers Uksha, is, which, is, which means ox, which is capable to produce semen. Currently, 72 communities, including some upper caste Hindus in Kerala, prefer beef to the mutton and some prefer it because it is cheaper than mutton. Hinduism's great proponent Swami Vivekananda said, You will be surprised to know that according to ancient Hindu rites and rituals, a man cannot be a good Hindu who does not eat beef. Savarkar himself um, said that when humanitarian interests are not served and in fact harmed by the cow and when humanism is shamed, self-defeating extreme cow protection should be rejected. Now, that is for the reference. The belief in um, Hindus is that cow is holy. Some of the thing, one of the things that is not mentioned in this is when Babur comes to India and becomes the king, um, he actually bans the killing of cow during Eid. Akbar reaffirms the ban and Shah Alam II also reaffirms the ban later in the Mughal years. It was only during when the East India uh, Company rule that beef becomes, beef slaughter becomes much more common. And Largely, there was like even though um, when even when Nehru was prime minister, the state governments in Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan, Bihar, and Maharashtra, in all of these states, beef slaughter was banned. Even though there was Congress government that was part of the setup there. However, that did not stop Prabodhan Brahmachari or people like Acharya Karpatri Maharaj to say that their opposition to Nehru was because of his allowing of beef slaughter or the Hindu court bill. Anyway, everyone knew that uh, Nehru will win the elections and so he did. He um, won more than seven, close to 75% of the votes cast in the in his constituency. What happens to Prabhupada Parmachari after the elections is the first instance of us hearing about him again is in, the, is in 1955 when a Patna police superintendent files a case where they talk about how uh, a few individuals, including Savarkar and other folks from Hindu Mahasabha and Akhil Bhartiya Ram Raja Parishad, 
were found to kind of gather and talk about some cow vegetarianism action that would be done starting in 1955 into 1957 for the next two years because according to them every year in the hindu history from 1657 1757 1857 has had some sort of revolutions so 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 1957 should as well also 1957 is the is the year that the second lok sabha elections would happen however outside of that nothing really happened beyond a few disruptive cases in patna and um, central provinces in uh, 1966 prabodhat brahmachari forms a group which is called uh, sgss it's uh, essentially what its name is is sarvadaliya goraksha mahabhiyan samiti so sgms not sgas sgms and uh, interestingly he does a hunger strike and uh, around uh, on 7th november 1966 around 7 lakh or the number can be contested a, a number of people come to delhi this is long after nehru has passed away and the situation turned out of control and there were reports of vandalism police resorted to firing resulted in six or seven sadhus dying many sadhus were imprisoned home minister gulzari lal landa had to resign from his post in 1967 he went on an indefinite fast on the issue of cow cow slaughter he broke the fast after 80 days in 1966 when vishwa hindu parishad is formed he is one of the individuals who's out there on the stage um, participating in it the hindu code bill was later submitted in four like in four division and was finalized by 1955 56 but the topic of hindu code bill never died and the discussions around uniform civil code is how we hear about it interestingly the same people who opposed the 1891 act and then the sharda act around the fact that outsiders cannot define our law said when in in an independent india was trying to do hindu code about how the religion should itself decide what it should which is in most cases is an excuse but the this these same people as they gained massive power as they have gained massive power now did not do the same thing and allowed for a lot of a number of muslim laws like triple talaq to go through cow and ucc still two of the biggest things that drive the hindu right in india and it is no surprise that even in our first election it was still driving all of us vhp is still there prabodhat brahmachari died in uh, 1990 at the ripe age of 105 his one dream was to see a hanuman mandir in delhi he called it the kotwal of delhi because he had seen a dream that delhi will be protected by hanuman so back then palam airport near palam airport if you i mean there's still this temple which is called kotwal of delhi it's a hanuman temple interestingly unrelated but when the nehru family first came to delhi it was nehru's grandfather gangadhar nehru who actually joined delhi uh, who actually came to delhi because his position was the city kotwal of delhi in delhi one of the candidates was a congress party sikh who made impressive use of bicycles and other means of transport for his campaign there are about a million voters in delhi out of a total indian electorate of well over 170 million men and women It's a three-month affair, and Mr. Nehru, who's travelled thousands of miles through the country, has of course been campaigning for Congress as well as urging the people to exercise their new democratic right to vote. Long years ago, we made a trip with destiny, and now the time comes when we shall redeem our pledge. सन्मान्य आदरणीय दीदी